Alright guys, it is a hot, sticky, miserable midsummer day in Texas here in early June in New York. It is Monday, June the 7th, 2021 here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of uh, Ithaca, New York, where I think we're going to break a new heat record in Ithaca, New York today. Uh, so anyway, the little dog and I, we have been out taking John Michael Greer's advice to learn how to hoe and grow vegetables, yes, uh, here in the garden, and, uh, you know, you learn how to hoe and grow vegetables or you die, but the problem is I'm about killed myself with heat stroke out there in the early morning hours on June 7th in New York, out there behind a hoe, I'm about this far from dying of heat stroke. This is why I am the only person here behind a hoe. Uh, you, you know, guys, if the, uh, if the, um, if Mad Max uh, cannibals don't get you then uh, the heat stroke will, and, uh, and I, as much respect as I have for John Michael Greer, the guy is not paying attention to climate change. Uh, and if, if John Michael Greer went out with, there with a hoe right now for about an hour, he would be dead. But anyway, uh, we're not here to talk about uh, climate change. We're here to talk about marauding hordes <coughs> taking a break from uh, heat stroke. Check in with the mainstream media today and several articles from different places on the planet about migrants. And guys, it, do it doesn't matter where your own personal opinion about uh, migrants uh, is. You know, I, I'm very conflicted, but it doesn't matter whether you are a right-wing Trump tard uh, on the right or some little left-wing snowflake, you, you know, build the wall Trump tard over here on the right or just uh, roll out the red carpet to the invading hordes you know, the little lefty snowflakes. It, it makes no difference. It doesn't change the fact that uh, one of the uh, things we're going to see intensifying, and we're already seeing it, and is going into overdrive uh, over the next few years is this, uh, what would you call it, tsunami of migration building, <clears throat> talking about Africans moving into Europe over there and Latin Americans moving in to the United States here. Whatever your own little political leaning opinion is, is irrelevant. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm simply here to chronicle here in the mainstream media news on Monday morning and the uh, in June of 2021 one of one of the classic indicators of well not even an empire in decline just in in a planet poised on the, the brink of chaos i have been predicting for years i'm not going to put a year on it although it's not far off now, when you are going to see um, the armies of the, of the countries being invaded by these migrants start shooting them. Um, my, guess, my guess is you're going to start seeing, it's going to start with vigilantes, with right-wing, uh, you, you know, let's face it, white, white right-wing vigilantes are going to be the first ones to start shooting and uh, it's not going to be long after that before the army starts shooting these people. 
Um, anyway, so let's just, let's start over there, I guess, in England. Uh, several versions of this story. This is the Telegraph. I think the Telegraph is based in London. Bring in the army to solve the migrant crisis, former border force boss says. Yeah, ministers should consider bringing in the armed forces to help UK border officers who face being overwhelmed by the influx of migrants across the channel, says a former head of border force. As the number of migrants to reach the UK in small boats this year hit 4,300, Tony Smith, former director general of Border Force, said it was clear the current setup was, quote, not fit for purpose. I love that wording, not fit for purpose. Depends on your definition of fit and purpose, I guess. <clears throat> Smith said the home office, I like how the, the home office, I'm not quite sure in England who the home office is exactly, should quote, stop pretending, close quote. It could halt the flow of migrants, accept the accept, A-C-C-E-P-T, the influx would continue for the foreseeable future and put in place a new, quote, command center with proper reception facilities, close quote, to cope with the numbers arriving on the south coast. He said border force officers risk being overwhelmed by the steady flow of hundreds of migrants they have to process on a daily basis uh, in Dover in a temporary shelter and by a forecasting system for crossing based simply on whether it was good or bad weather. Overcrowding also means migrants are not being tested for corona panic leaving, quote, officers feeling very nervous, they will catch it. It feels a bit chaotic, chaotic to me, he said. Do you think so? It feels a bit chaotic. There doesn't seem to be a long-term master plan, which is about accepting that this is going to be a future of our lives, a feature of our lives for the foreseeable future, and stop pretending that we are going to be able to stop this. Yes. Uh, I would be pressing for a more concentrated strategic management plan based on the fact that we have not been able to stop the boats. And then this one, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I love this part of his uh, rant here. That should still be our political ambition, you know, speaking for the British. But the plain fact is that, at, that without an agreement with the French to take them, them back, we are not going to be able to do instant returns back to France. Now, I don't think this is French citizens coming from France to England. Maybe I totally misunderstand uh, who are in all of these overloaded boats. Uh, maybe it is peasants from the French countryside. It never mentions where these migrants are coming from. Anywhere in this story, you will not see, it will not mention where these migrants are coming from. We all know damn well where these migrants are coming from. They ain't coming from France. Well, I, I mean, you, you know, they are coming from France. I, I guess if you work on the Border Patrol, which I guess is like the Coast Guard, you, you know, yeah, they're coming from France, so we're just going to send them back to France. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I would feel more comfortable if first we accept this is an ongoing process and second we have a joint agency approach that could include military, police, and a full range of UK assets to, de to support the defense of our border and management of irregular migration because I don't think we are coping. Close quote. Yes, he does not think we are coping. Then they talk about the same story you're, uh, you're seeing here, that more and more in Europe they're seeing unaccompanied children showing up uh, in, in, in these boats. And uh, more and more parents are just uh, dumping their their children and, and just here uh, just wing it kid uh, I remember you know I'm talking back in uh, the early 1990s when I was in Honduras and this mother this 29 year old woman she had eight children she was begging me to take it, you know, at least one of her children, some some total strange uh, dude she meets from the States, I, I mean the woman begging me to uh, take one of her daughters uh, back with me to the U.S. Uh, you, you know, and, and guys, I, I'm talking 30 years ago, uh, this Honduran woman you know, living in this shack uh, with her eight children at age 29 in tears, just pleading with me to, uh, you know, take your choice, gringo. Uh, take uh, one of my kids. I, I came damn close to adopting an eight-year-old Honduran girl. Uh, fortunately, I... Uh, saw the light about uh anyway okay but let's just look at our uh our own country let's just pick one from associated press migrants are warned of smuggling risks on the california border a man alleged to have captained a boat that fell apart and killed three people off the San Diego coast has been indicted by a federal grand jury in what authorities said Wednesday was a growing number of deaths in migrant smuggling attempts along California's border with Mexico. We're not talking about Arizona or Texas. We're talking about California. Um, see, so this guy pleaded not guilty to smuggling charges weeks after he was arrested when a cabin cruiser packed with 33 s people smashed on the rocky shores of San Diego, off of San Diego's Point Loma Peninsula. Uh, exactly two months earlier, 13 Mexican and Guatemala citizens in an overloaded SUV were killed when struck by a tractor trailer in the remote desert community of Holtzville. Uh, authorities say 25 migrants that are officially being reported, and he and you better believe the number is a hell of a lot bigger than 25. Authorities say 25 migrants have died in smuggling attempts on California's border with Mexico from October through April. Uh, representatives of several law enforcement agencies pleaded with migrants at a news conference yesterday to avoid the dangerous journey, saying the smugglers' only concern was their profit, was their profits. 
survivors of the May 2nd boat wreck told investigators they paid $15,000 to $18,000 to be smuggled from Mexico. Uh, another migrants uh, involved in another boat wreck uh, resulting in one fatal drowning said they had paid $12,000 to $15,000. In March, anybody thinking this is only uh, Mexicans and Guatemalans, in March, Neil Valera, a U.S. citizen, was sentenced to five years in prison in connection with the deaths of three Chinese migrants, including a mother and her 15-year-old son who were found in the trunk of his BMW. Good God, guys, uh, said Randy Grossman, acting U.S. Attorney in San Diego, quote, Smugglers will leave you in a trunk or a hidden compartment, and they will not listen to your screams if you are in distress. They just want their fees. That is exactly what they want and uh, anybody who is looking uh, to make a dollar off of the collapse of the American Empire, uh, global industrial society and the planet can, you know, uh, rent out your BMW uh, at $12,000 a pop to stuff uh, migrants into your trunk. You can make $36,000 in uh, about two hours. But anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse because I have to uh, head to the nursery and uh, to buy a new batch of cucumber seeds to overseed my cucumber bed. I had a a uh, failure rate. I planted 42 cucumbers, 39 of which did not germinate. Off to buy cucumbers, I suggest you get out there and buy cucumber seeds while you still can. And uh, if you're going to get out there and to hoe and learn to grow vegetables to keep from dying, I would suggest doing it before 8 o'clock in the morning so you don't die of heat stroke trying to avoid Mad Max. Bye, guys. Uh.